bunny clucking like a chicken. The bunny is laying the egg. Is <laughs> wait. Is that a thing where like the Easter Bunny lays eggs? In these commercials, these. Wow. <laughs> Ah, get it off! This one's hard. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. I'm in the BA Test Kitchen, and today I'm making gourmet Cadbury eggs. I've probably had maybe like three Cadbury eggs in my whole life, but I like the idea of them a lot. They're kind of delightful. I just am not, I don't know. I would never like buy a bag for myself because I don't, I don't really celebrate Easter. I do like Cadbury chocolate just because it's like, it's so sweet and it's so creamy and it's just kind of magical even though you know, I'm sure it's not like the highest quality chocolate, but there's just something about it. I've never seen some of these different kinds. I guess this is the classic, the Cadbury cream egg. It's a chocolate egg with a cream filling, so it's hollow. And then there's also a caramel egg, which I'm excited to try. Cadbury scream egg, I'm trying to make this Halloween themed. Then there's mini eggs, which are milk chocolate with a crisp sugar shell. So these are solid, not filled. Look at the little bunny. I think I liked it because we had a bunny when I was a kid. What was your bunny's name? Her name was Fufu. She was a terrible pet and she bit us constantly and we couldn't really play with her. And if we tried to take her out to play with her, she would run under the couch. <laughs> it would take us two and a half hours to get her back in her cage. It was not a great pet. It is a very pleasing, very kind of classical egg shape. <gasps> Ew. All right, wow. One thing I didn't recall was that it was this filled. It is like really, really filled. I thought there would be more of like an air pocket. All right, I'm gonna taste it. I mean, there's kind of a different texture to the filling. There's semi-liquid, very sticky filling, and then there's this part at the bottom, which is sort of like a little bit thicker, almost more like frosting texture. Mm. The filling makes my teeth hurt. It's so sweet. I'm kind of loving the outside though. It's just like very delicious and smooth and creamy. There is a seam right down the length. So it's pretty clear how these are made. Just trying to crack it along the seam. You want a Cadbury egg? Surgery? Yeah. Like, look at this. Do you want a half? Yeah. The caramel is like pretty meh. The caramel is terrible. Yeah. What the f the scream egg? Uh. Oh. Wow, what an unappealing color. This is actually one of my favorite. I kind of love that. Candies. I kind of nibble the chocolate and leave the filling because I care less about the filling than I do about the chocolate. I like the filling. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think you're gonna do? I wanna use real eggs as the mold. Oh, fun, cool. I've never actually done that before. Really like blow out an egg, you know? Mm -hmm. What if you just make two halves? Why, why do you even have to open the egg? Not like with silicone. I mean, I'm going to fill, I'm gonna empty out the Ooh, egg. Oh, the egg is gonna the be egg. the mold? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take a closer look at the single Cadbury egg, take a look inside, take some measurements. So I'm gonna clear all this off and get it on a cutting board. I'm gonna cut it around that central seam. Okay, so the yolk is this area at the top, but it is pretty swirled into the rest of the filling, which is white. It's almost the texture of like icing on a loaf cake or a bundt cake, that kind of thing, which is just like milk mixed with powdered sugar. And actually the thickness of the walls is not uniform. It's not all the, way, the same all the way around. In some areas it's thicker and in some areas it's thinner. This is smaller than a large egg. It might be closer to like a medium chicken egg. <laughs> Gordon, don't do it, Gordon, don't do it. Please don't do it. Okay, thank you. This is a large egg. So it's probably twice, maybe more, even three times the size of Cadbury egg. This is gonna be huge. Maybe we'll get some medium eggs just so they're a little bit smaller. Now it's time for my favorite part, reading the ingredients. Milk chocolate, parentheses, sugar, milk, chocolate, cocoa butter, milk fat, non-fat milk, soy lecithin, natural and artificial flavors, close parentheses, sugar, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, contains 2% or less of artificial color, parentheses, yellow six, close parentheses, artificial flavor, calcium chloride, egg whites. Not a whole lot going on. It was pretty much as expected. That's the filling of this is corn syrup and sugar. I'm predicting this will be an episode of Gourmet Makes where the goal will be to create a candy that has aspects of a Cadbury egg, but I'm not in any way trying to replicate a Cadbury egg because the filling is kind of so, it's kind of such like a non-entity, the filling. It's just made of sugar and I, I can do better than that. So we're gonna do a lot of crafting, I bet, which I'm excited about. Got the ingredients down, now we're gonna do a little bit of research. Oh, this is it! Something more cuddly, yeah. Ooh. Friendlier. 
Thank you. But not quite what we had in mind. Everyone wants to be the Cadbury Bunny. Because only he brings Cadbury cream eggs with their delicious milk chocolate outside and creamy filling. This part. Oh. Creamy filling. Like, look at that shot. It looks so delicious. The fillings and the ones we opened did not look like that. But this is what I aspire my version to look like. So my plan on day two is to come in and start by focusing on the filling, which I'm going to make with, I think, like a homemade sweet condensed milk and try to get that in a good place, then move on to construction and using real eggs as my mold. But all right, I'm, I'm kind of excited. I think it'll be a fun project. All oh, right, Cadbury eggs. Today's day two of Cadbury egg. I had forgotten that this is what we were doing. I think it's going to be a challenging but also kind of fun and interesting process. So today I'm going to focus on trying to make the chocolate shell um, using real eggs as my mold. And then if I have time, I'll move on to the filling. I've never done the technique called blowing out an egg where you remove the white and the yolk from the shell, leaving it intact. <laughs> no nail in here. Gabby, where are the skewers? Oh, thank you. Okay. The what? The shirt. It's perfect. Oh my god! I for, I didn't yeah. even realize. Oh, you didn't do that on purpose? No. Oh well, it I just worked out. was like, this is the shirt that's clean. <laughs> so today we have medium eggs because I was trying to get something a chicken egg as close as possible to the size of the actual Cadbury egg. So I'm gonna try to poke a hole. Oh. Now let me try from this direction, actually. <laughs> All right. Wow. How'd that look? You know, great. That's going in the real. <laughs> All right. That was fun. Not that bad. I'm going to grab a paring knife and try to make sure the membrane is off of there. And then also I need an opening so I can sterilize it with boiling water. Hi, Carla. How are you? Just blowing out eggs. I mean, I feel like this is sort of, maybe it's because of the commercials and stuff, but uh -huh. seeing that like yolk-esque thing. Yes. The commercial really exaggerates the presence of like a yolky Definitely. thing. Um, oh my God. And it's grainy. I know. I wish it was more like marshmallowy. Like mm. that feels Eastery to me, that mm -hmm. it would have like a marshmallow vibe. Uh -huh. Ooh, you just kind of gave me an idea. Ooh. There's like not very large holes yeah. to like get stuff in there. Right. So something would either, either have to be liquid or I'd have to like pipe it in there. Yeah. I could pipe a filling into it. That's yeah. what made me think of that when you said marshmallow. Oh. Filling. Maybe I'll try that. All right, I'm going to cut out some of that membrane. And then once I have a bunch of the eggs blown out, I'll sterilize all of them. What should I make with the egg? Maybe I'll just make a big omelet. I'm feeling good about this process so far. <gasps> I think it's fine. It didn't crack. So I've emptied out all the eggs. I want to sterilize them. And then while I'm steaming them, I'm going to make something with the eggs, which I had to strain to get all the little shells out. Cadbury? Yeah. I, I felt like they were bigger. Oh my God, they were bigger. They were like this big. Brad, you're very right. Right? You are correct. It's going to be a thick omelet. And voila. Should I get plates? So here is a chive and cheddar omelet, French style. Very simple. I want you guys eating. It's delicious. The shells look great. Nothing broke. I'm just, I'm trying to see if anything happened to the membranes. Everything looks basically the same as when it went in. These need to fully dry because if there's any water in them, that's going to be a problem for the chocolate. So I might put them in the dehydrator for a bit. Well, what, yeah, what temperature does plastic melt at? Do we have a paper carton? I want to use the paper carton. It's probably better. This seems less hazardous. While the eggs are dehydrating, I'm going to start the filling. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. OK. <laughs> All right, let's just, just throw it at me. Oh, god. I used to love these things when I was a kid. It's just that, like, that weird gunge inside, that goo. Okay, so speaking of the goo, yeah. that's what I'm trying to make right what now. Is the goo? I'm making homemade sweetened condensed milk because I can't really decide like what else to make it out of, right? It's like sticky yeah. and gooey and like yeah, just like cook it down, but like don't let it caramelize. Yeah, I mean maybe right? a tiny bit. A tiny bit of color. Yeah. 
but because you kind of then have to have like a distinct you have to like dye a little bit right or something yeah for so the, you get, yeah, like, the a yolk, yolk is going to be something else I'm not oh sure. it'll be a separate I'm not mixture I'm not sure what yet but I think it's going to be a separate thing awesome. I'll let you know I'll check back so it starts with 32 ounces milk Six ounces of heavy cream, seven ounces of sugar, hit a vanilla paste, and just a pinch of salt. I'm gonna put this on the stove. It shouldn't really vigorously boil though. This is gonna take probably an hour, and it requires pretty consistent tending. So I was like, what if we set up a stirring contraption, and then someone had the idea to use a stand mixer and attach a spatula <laughs> to it, turn it on. We're gonna try it. Why not? Here's the thing. I'm making this sweetened condensed milk. Yeah. I want to set up a stirring machine. <laughs> but like, I want to suspend it over the mixture. Can you get like, low. you know, one of those like rigs with like a mixer clamped to oh, it? Oh, we also have a C stand. C -stand. C -stand. Yeah, we, we got that stuff. Kevin went to find a C stand, possibly. You go clear. How, how does this work? So then how, how does this attach to there? Thank you. <laughs> I'm into this. <gasps> Ooh. All right, I think this is great. Whoa, look at this rig, Claire. I don't want to have to stir for an hour. Good for you, I love this. Kevin mostly did it. Who broke out the C-stand, Kevo? Yeah. Yeah, bud. Maybe. Best thing I've seen all week. Really? Yeah. It's Tuesday, but thanks. This is great, Claire. Yeah, take lunch. The robot's got it. Exactly. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, all right, I got Brad's approval, and now we are going to have lunch. We'll come back in, in an hour, and I think that this will be done, and our eggs will be dry. All right, this contraption is working great. I was afraid that there maybe would be some scorching or sticking around the sides, but there wasn't even any of that. It's not done yet, but I can just leave it here. The next thing I want to do is grab my shells from the dehydrator. Right, these should be plenty dry. So first I want to hollow out the egg and weigh just the chocolate. So it's about 20 grams of chocolate. My guess is I'll need 50% more chocolate, so I'll go with 30 grams. Now I want to measure the weight of the shells so I know what to subtract. So that shell is 4.8. I just want to get an average, 4.2, 5.2, 5.8. Wow, there's pretty big variation. I think we should just call it five grams. I'm feeling like this is a good texture. Look at this. It's pretty thick. See, I can run a finger through it like that. It's delicious. You know what? I might melt a little butter into this. Yeah, 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 throw it. So I'm gonna add an ounce of butter and then I'm gonna stir it over an ice bath. I feel like it is thick enough. This is homemade and then this is Cadbury. The consistencies are really similar. And I might just dip a hand blender in here to smooth it out so that I have a super uniform consistency, more like the original. The flavor is very good. I like the look of it, the color and everything. The consistency might be a little off. So I'm just gonna let it sit there and I'll come back and evaluate later in this afternoon. What is tempered chocolate? Oh, man. I'm gonna say what I usually say, which is just roll back to one of the 18,000 other episodes in which I say it and play, play that clip. I refuse to say for the probably 12th time what tempered chocolate is, so I'm just gonna go to the tape. Tempered chocolate is chocolate that is heated, cooled, and then heated again to specific temperatures so that the chocolate has a firm snap. What I mostly learned from Seoul is you have to stir the shit out of it to the point where it's almost about to set. And I wanna bring it to 110. Chocolate goes in, and it's bringing the whole temperature up to 85 Fahrenheit. All right, so now back onto the water until I get up to 95. Where are you using the mix pot? I could, I guess I could. Should I try it? I'm at 88, 89, 94. Oh my god, 98! Ah, get it off! Can't help! Oh my god, you guys, what just happened? Okay, we're at 93, 94. All right, I think we're fine. So I'll do a little test patch on the parchment paper, and while I'm waiting, I'm going to just set that on there. Sola. You have a minute. I feel like I tempered this really well, but now I feel like it's not tempered. Did it go past it? No. And I've just been keeping it warm. It's just there. I think that looks tempered. I think this oh, is tempered. Oh, that does look tempered. Yeah. Okay. What more do you want? I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. I think you should. Okay. So I need to create a chocolate shell inside of this shell. Thank 
you. So now I'm transferring the chocolate to a pastry bag because that'll be the easiest way to get it into the eggs. Then pour the chocolate out and repeat the process to get enough of a chocolate layer built up. So here are all my eggs. As far as I can tell, they're filled with chocolate. What I'm happy to see is that there's really no chocolate that's dripped out and is pooling in the bottom. So that to me says that there's a nice coating on there. And basically I'm just repeating that process until I build up around 30 grams of chocolate. So we'll come back tomorrow, finish the chocolate. I can evaluate my filling in the morning. And I don't know, I'm feeling pretty good about the process. So hopefully wrapping it up on day three. So today I'm going to continue to fill and empty out the eggs to build up the walls of the chocolate so that I can fill them and break apart the shell and then I'm pretty much done. I wanna take a look at the eggs which I left in the fridge overnight. Not today, Corey. They feel good. I mean, this part's, I'm, this is really kind of fun. I'm thinking that I'll get a thicker layer of chocolate this time around because the cold chocolate that's already in there will set the chocolate that I pour in and when I pour it out, there'll just be a thicker layer on top. So I'm gonna leave these in the fridge while I temper and this is the chocolate from yesterday. I'm gonna chop it up and use this supplement with more if needed and just repeat that whole process. I also wanna look at the filling I made yesterday. I do feel like after I blended it with the hand blender to smooth it out, it just thinned the consistency a bit. I could try to beat some butter into it and that would certainly thicken it. I, it's close, I just think it needs to be a tiny bit thicker. All right, this is the chocolate from yesterday. I'm gonna chop it up and then repeat that whole tempering process. All right, so I'm gonna pull this off. So I'm gonna just repeat that whole process from yesterday and then empty all of them out. Ooh, these are gonna go back into the fridge and fully set and then work on the fillings and then fill and try to chip off the chocolate and kind of see if I got an egg out of this whole business. It's so fun, I like really like doing this. So this is gonna go back into the fridge and we'll come back in a little bit and see how it all looks. I feel really good about the chocolate and I feel good enough to move on to the filling. So I'm going to work on the texture of my sweet and condensed milk mixture and also start to think more seriously about the yolk. I guess at this point I'm feeling like I'm going to make a liquid caramel and just try to get it to the texture where we'll hold its shape but it's still soft enough to bite through and isn't like a chewy sticky mess. So that's where I'm going to start. So I'll start with about a half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons water, three tablespoons heavy cream and two tablespoons butter. Take this over to the stove. I only stir it until the sugar is dissolved and then after that I stop stirring. This is a nice dark amber color so I'm going to add my other ingredients to stop the cooking so it doesn't burn and then the butter. So once this is all smooth and the butter is melted and everything is well incorporated, I'm going to stir it over an ice bath to cool it down just so I have a better sense of the final texture. I don't want it to be liquid, but I don't want it to be like a chewy caramel either. I'm gonna let that fully cool. For the filling, I'm going to melt some butter and emulsify it into this mixture. Then as the butter cools, it should thicken everything really nicely. I'm gonna do another two tablespoons. Mm. It's really good, really, really delicious. That really helps balance out the sweetness a lot, but I'm not sure it thickened it enough. Chris, this is homemade sweet and condensed milk wow. into which I, I emulsified some butter. It's very tasty, do you wanna try it? Like you got like no color on it and it didn't yeah. boil over. I'm so impressed. Oh, thanks, it was all of that robot. Good, right? It needs to be thicker. Ooh. It's good, right? Then what's happening mean. here? Is this your yolk? This is caramel, which is I was trying to come up with kind of a yolk mixture, and I'm not I'm not sure what to do about it. Do I go for something that visually says yolk, or do I go for something that's gonna taste good like this caramel? Like my initial thought and was you put yolk in your yolk. What would happen if I melted a little bit of that into this and cooked yolk into it? I think that would be pretty cool. As like a stirred custard. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Chris. Great. I also like the idea of using eggs in it because it's eggs. I'm gonna crack a whole egg and then just a yolk into this one. Okay. A dollop of this caramel. We couldn't find the fancy food coloring, so I'm just using like McCormick. That looks like the yolk of a really healthy egg. All right. So this hit 180. I'm gonna take it off the heat and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other batch. I'm gonna bring this over here. Oh, what fun, guys. Right? Just stirring this until it's cold, hopefully thicker. What happened? So, like, did it get oh, thicker? It's like okay. hard to say. 
Oh, and you cooled it. I mean, I do think, it, yeah. Okay. It, I do think it's thickening. Maybe I'll Who add a little. says it needs to be that thick? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. I feel like it should be. Maybe it should be a little thicker, though. Should I add more butter to try to emulsify it in? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Solid at room temp. Exactly. Why is it so loose? I'm so confused. It was so much thicker yesterday. And now I'm going to add more butter. Same way as before, in the hopes that this will really further thicken. So I added two tablespoons to that one, and I'm gonna add one to the yolk. All right, let's wrap this up. Here are my mixtures. I do think that they seem thicker. I think I'm gonna go with it. I just really like the way that they taste. I think the look is good, and I'm just kind of hoping that they set up. So I'm gonna look at my eggs. Oh, Corey. Oh my God, like both the eggs. These feel good, they feel solid. Is this too thin, Gabby? Mm, and it's a little thin. Is it too thin? Oh, it is thin. Put more sugar in it. I don't want. I don't want to make this sweeter. Put gelatin. I know, but gelatin's such a weird texture. I don't know. Now I'm thinking gelatin. <laughs> Bye, Claire. Bye, Gabby. Enjoy you your egg. Go, Maylie. I think maybe I am gonna do gelatin. What's good about gelatin is I can hydrate it, melt it on its own, and then stir it into these mixtures while they're cooled. And then I'm done, and then I just, I'm not gonna do this anymore because I am getting tired. I'm gonna get some gelatin. First thing I have to do is hydrate the gelatin in some water. So just sprinkle the gelatin over the water. Actually, like kind of crazy to watch. I'm gonna add more. This has to soften for about 10 minutes, and then I'll take it over to the stove and melt it and add it to my fillings. Like, it's already less liquid. See how it's, falling in sheets and kind of clumps rather than in like a thin stream. I'm gonna fill them. I don't have time. All right, this is gonna go into this piping bag. I'm going to fill everything with a white and then put the piping bag with the yolk mixture into the center and then pipe. Just have it kind of suspended in there. These are looking great, I have to say. I'm pretty excited about it. It definitely is more cream-like, but it's not dripping. So I'm happy about that. I do feel like it has sort of that same amount of thickness and it tastes great. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the yolk mixture. I feel really good about these. I think I might not temper it. It's just not worth it. Like I just, I need a tiny bit of chocolate. No one's gonna notice. Don't tell anyone. My one hope is that the colors don't blend too much and that everything kind of stays put. But I think given the thickness, like thickness looks pretty good. So we're kind of out of time today, but the last thing I'm gonna do is just clean up the edges of the chocolate to take away any of the filling. And then I'm gonna cover these. I'm like really enjoying this episode. It's just really fun. I just sit, keep saying it because it doesn't really happen that often. Okay, cool. Okay, today's day four. Everything's been going well so far, and I just am in the final steps, which is plugging the opening with a little bit of melted chocolate, letting it set, and then tasting them. I'm actually really excited to eat these. And all I'm gonna do is melt a little bit of milk chocolate, and I'm not going to temper it because it's really difficult to temper such a small quantity of chocolate, and I really only need like an ounce of chocolate to fill these tiny little holes. So it's just not practical, and also I don't want to. I'm gonna make a little cornet to pipe the chocolate into the little opening. This is all melted. I'm gonna bring it back over. So I'm just gonna start piping just until I fill the opening, really. I might come back in with like a little toothpick or a spatula and smooth it out. And then I'll just wipe off excess with this paper towel. This chocolate's already starting to set and I'm gonna pop it in the fridge. It probably just needs like five minutes and then I can start to take the shells off. While I've been waiting for the chocolate to set, and I pulled some pastel luster dust colors to see if we can give it like a little Easter eggy kind of feel on the outside. First I have to peel them. All right, here we go. I'm going to peel these one by one. So this is gonna take a little while. There we go. Oh yeah. It's, oh my God, look, it is a perfect egg. I love it so much. That's really satisfying. I would do this again. I like it so much. All right, so I'm just gonna go one at a time, get these guys peeled. Oh yeah. The chocolate is bloomed, and this one, it's like perfectly smooth and shiny. Here, let's do that thing again with this one because it looks way better. But let's see what the other ones look like. What you great, Claire. Don't they look good? Wow. But look what's- This is some of your finest work. Thank you. Except I'm having a, a, a consistency issue. See how that one is speckled and those are smooth? And then this one is speckled? What's that from, you think? The chocolate- Coco- yeah. Yeah. Maybe it has something to do with like, 
I don't know, the interaction with the membrane of the shell or something, you know? That's what I was... Because they're not completely smooth inside. But how come they're different, is my question? Because it's like the same eggs and same the same... Same batch of chocolate? The same batch of chocolate. Interesting. I know, right? I don't know, Claire. Good question. Yeah. I'll ask Sola. All right, I'll be around. All right. This one's kind of in between. So weird. That chocolate is fascinating and frustrating. Oh my God, like look at the crazy pattern on this one. It's just really strange. They're getting crazier and crazier. Some of these came out really smooth. This looks good. So like, what did I do wrong? It's gotta be the shells. That's what I think too. Yeah. I think it's the shells. At least the other parts of it worked out well. Like I think it, like I there's mean, obviously even coverage and they came out I, of the shells. It's so amazing how there's no seam. Does the original have a seam? It does. Oh, it's it does. Halves. This yeah. is even That's, better. Yeah, exactly. Gourmet. I'm gonna decorate them with luster dust and we'll just look leaf. at these two. All right, so I'll call you when it's time to taste. So now I'm gonna start decorating. So I'm just gonna go one color at a time and do some kind of like washes of color all over. Wait a minute, I'm having flashbacks of this green to jelly beans. This is the opposite of jelly beans. So the luster dusting is complete and now I'm gonna just add a speckle of gold around the surface, just here and there. All right, last one. Okay, so here is homemade and original side by side. So fun. We're ready to taste, pretty much. The first thing I want to do is cut one open so we can hopefully see the yolk and the filling. Whoa. Look at, okay, does it look like an egg? It does not not look like an egg, right? Not only is the yolk more defined, the thickness of the chocolate looks really good to me. It's not super thin in, one, in some places and then really thick on either end. It's pretty even. Okay, can I taste it? These are really good. It's definitely less sweet than a Cadbury egg. It's so sweet because it's milk chocolate, but I love the way the milk chocolate kind of marries with the milky filling and you get a little bit of vanilla. That's just like kind of delightful. This to me is like what you wish a Cadbury egg tasted like. It's just really tasty. Mm. I love the way these look. Me too. This was really fun. Okay. Do I love Riding Easter? In. I think I love Easter. I love Easter. <laughs> I see. Look how good that looks. So good. There was like so much learning in this episode because I learned that sweet it's actually condensed. really easy and fun to make your own sweet condensed milk. Because mm -hmm. that was the base. But did you have a robot doing that? Yeah, but I did the thinking. The okay. robot just did the stirring. Claire, you've outdone yourself. Oh, thanks Rhoda. This was <laughs> so fun. I might make these again. These are so pretty. I love them. Slam dunk. The chocolate tastes great. Well, I didn't make that part, but thanks. I know, but. But it's tempered. It's tempered. I had like the, the art direction on it. Uh huh. The cream is actually pretty nice. I know, isn't it good? Yeah. It's good. As, as a person who's been on record saying I don't like a cream filled egg. Right. It's tasty, right? Well, the thing that's nice about yours is that the texture is just a little firmer, it's a little tighter. Yeah. So and I wish this... it was a little less set, but. But at whatever. the same time, like, I don't want a gooey chocolate. It, like, That's true. I'm like glad it doesn't ooze under your hands. Let's talk about this chocolate, which looks snappy. It does. It is snappy. Totally the snappy. chocolate is snappy. We're going to just say that the bloom on the outside it's not is the result of the weird, it's the weird egg membrane mm -hmm. and not ill-tempered chocolate. This was so much fun. I love this one. Yeah. I only want to make chocolate eggs from now on. What do we got? Here, would you like to try this piece yes. at this half. Ooh, I feel like one of your like most like definitively improved gourmets of anything. Yes. Like took something that I would not eat and turn it into something that if we weren't rationing these out, I would ask for another one. Oh my God, I'll save you one. Yes. Thanks. This is maybe one of my most enjoyed episodes yet, just because it was so fun. And something about using real eggs as the mold just felt like super, there's like a real purity to this episode that I enjoyed so much. Plus the crafting, the whole thing was just like one day craft project. The luster dust, we got to use all of our favorite stuff. And I think the end result is super delicious. So this is a fun one. And now the next one can be terrible and it'll be fine. It'll all even out. Here's how you make gourmet, <laughs> what are they called? Here's how you make gourmet Cadbury eggs.
To make the egg molds, use a small screw to bore a hole in the wider end of a medium egg and then use a small scissors to cut a wider circle on the top. Use a skewer to stir the raw egg inside the shell and break up the yolk, then turn the egg upside down and shake out the insides. Repeat with a dozen eggs. Rinse out the shells, then place the empty shells in a steamer basket set inside a large pot filled with an inch of boiling water. Cover the pot and steam the shells for 15 minutes. Remove from the heat, carefully transfer the shells to an egg carton, hole facing up, and place in the dehydrator for a couple of hours to ensure the interiors of the shells are completely dry. Then transfer the shells to the refrigerator. To temper the chocolate, melt 400 grams of good quality milk chocolate discs in a bowl set over a pot of steaming but not simmering water, stirring constantly until it registers 110 Fahrenheit on an instant read thermometer. Remove from the heat and stir in 120 grams of finely chopped milk chocolate, then stir continuously until the solid bits are melted and the temperature of the mixer drops to 85 Fahrenheit. Remove the water from the stove and place the bowl of chocolate back over top. Stir constantly until the temperature rises to 95 Fahrenheit. Scrape the chocolate into a piping bag, snip a small opening, and then carefully pipe the chocolate into the eggs, filling almost to the tops. Working one at a time over a bowl, turn the eggs over and gently shake out the excess chocolate. Turn the eggs right side up and place back in the carton, then chill until the chocolate is set. Repeat the tempering, filling, and pouring off process until each egg weighs about 35 grams. Chill until the chocolate is set and you're ready to fill the eggs. To make the caramel, combine a half a cup granulated sugar and two tablespoons water in a small saucepan. Stir over medium heat to dissolve the sugar, then stop stirring and bring the mixture to a boil. Cook, swirling the pot and washing down the sides with a wet pastry brush until the caramel is a deep amber color. Remove the pot from the heat and carefully stir in three tablespoons heavy cream and two tablespoons salted butter, bit by bit, until the mixture is smooth. Stir the caramel over an ice bath until fully cooled. To make the filling, combine 32 ounces of milk, six ounces of heavy cream, seven ounces of granulated sugar, a half teaspoon of vanilla paste, and a pinch of kosher salt in a large saucepan and bring to a simmer over low heat, stirring constantly to dissolve the sugar. Continue to cook, whisking constantly, until the mixture is thickened and reduced by a little over 60%. Remove from the heat and stir over an ice bath until fully cooled. Blend with an immersion blender to eliminate lumps, then slowly stream in nine tablespoons of melted cooled butter, blending constantly to emulsify. Place a third of this mixture in a small saucepan and whisk one large egg yolk and a generous dollop of the cooled caramel in. Cook over low heat, whisking constantly until the mixture registers 180 Fahrenheit. Remove from the heat and whisk in yellow and red food coloring until you achieve a yolky color. Set aside. Place the remaining mixture in a separate small saucepan and whisk in one large egg. Cook over low heat, whisking constantly until the mixture registers 180 Fahrenheit. Remove from the heat and set aside. Sprinkle one tablespoon of powdered unflavored gelatin over a small saucepan filled with a quarter cup of cold water and let sit for 10 minutes to soften the gelatin. Gently melt the softened gelatin over low heat until completely translucent and free of granules. Blend one tablespoon of the gelatin mixture into the yolk mixture, then two tablespoons into the whites mixture. Transfer the whites mixture to a pastry bag, snip a small hole, and fill each egg two-thirds full. Transfer the yolk mixture to a bag and fill the eggs to the top. Cover the eggs and let the filling set for several hours at room temperature. Melt more milk chocolate and dab some into the holes to fill, then chill until the chocolate is set. Use a paring knife to chip away the shells around the opening, then peel off the shells. Decorate the eggs with luster dust. So I buy into it? Yeah. All right, ready? Ready, world? Mm. Oh. Mm. Thank you. I'm not gonna eat these. 